So I just kind of continue to keep pushing through with my work and evolving in that sort of way. And I'm really grateful for all the teachings that I've gotten in my lifetime to be able to do what I do. Um, now I just, I explore and I adapt and I adapt to my environment where I am today and how I feel and what period I'm at in my life. Right now, I have a beautiful family. I just had a, a, a daughter 18 months ago and she has brought so much more life into me and I already have a 14 year old daughter too. So it's, it's again, there's a big, big separation between them and age, but the, the movement of life is what's so exciting. It's like every day when I go into my studio, it's that feeling that I bring into it. So I don't think it really, for me, it's not what I create. It's the feeling that I have while I'm creating. So if it's color, I'll use it for whatever I'm feeling. So I think that expression is my language through my work. It's like when you come into a gallery, what you see is how I'm feeling in this moment. And if I do something, it's done. I, I don't like to keep going back and replicating things. If I do a mask, I'm not going to do another mask like that again, or I'm not going to paint another, you know, the same. Um, I think for me, what I like to keep traditional is what is sacred and spiritual. I've never really grasped or kind of got the concept behind um, a lot of what is considered really spiritual within our potlatch societies, within masks and stuff, and then have them sold the next day. Uh, it's a, it's a, it maintains a lot of balance, it, I, or acquires a lot of balance, and I, I'm not quite there. It's really difficult for me. So I personally have made a choice to not do any of it. I leave that for when I go home to go to Paul Latches to see it. That's my treat. And then I carve specific masks for families, and that belongs to them. That's sacred to them. That's special to them. For me, I do everything, but I, um, so I, I push those boundaries outside the polished world to grasp everything. It's, it's almost a statement for me to say, you can be a First Nations artist and still do everything else. You don't have to replicate the same things over and over to be considered a First Nations artist. I think it comes within you. If that's how you're raised and that's what your culture is, no matter what it is, whether you be Japanese or Mexican or Italian or Russian, um, if that's what you are, that's what you're creating. That's what you're surrounded by. That's your environment. And that's just how I feel. I happen to live in a city right now where I'm surrounded by so much other stuff, but I am born and raised First Nations and that's what's in me and that's my heart and that's my soul and that's my foundation and adapting to other things and creating is just where I'm at in this period of my life. So so I just keep pushing forward and I respect that. That's where I find my balance is finding that integrity or that honor and that spiritual place of knowing where where I fit between going home to Paul Latches and where I live in everyday life. So I make my living off of how I feel in the moment, what I'm feeling. I'm not uh, going and into museums and looking at something that I think is really cool and saying I'm going to replicate it and then sell it because I don't get that. I'm just kind of like looking at everything universal, globally. I like to adapt and I think my, my objective, my goal, is to create um, a style for myself that is distinctive, that is evolving, that is moving and captivating and is creating an audience. I, I like to think of myself sometimes as like a musician. And I just created like my first album and it's an 
a mixture of all these different styles. And in the moment in my life, like I like Cuban music, and I like Afro beats, and I like electronic. So throwing it all together to make a really good vibe. I think the same way as, as my art. I like color, so I use color, and I've got the foundation of my First Nations uh, studies. So that's a strong foundation there. And then I take everyday life, and then I put it together, and then I throw together a series of artwork, and that's my album at the moment. And for me, it's like if people really enjoy that, they can't wait to hear the next album. So it's like, when's the next show? What's he going to be working on next? So it's challenging at the same time for me, yet it's liberating. And I feel like I'm alive and I'm always moving and I'm excited to be in my studio every day and I'm always thinking of what my next body of work is going to be. So, yeah.